Pauline Favre. I'm working in the CEA in Paris in the neuroimaging platform, which is called Neurospin, and I'm working in the psychiatry group. I'm a postdoctoral researcher and I am working on the Enigma bipolar DTI data. Bipolar disorder is a really frequent disorder. It affects almost 1% of the general population. Um, it's a very severe disease and it's characterized by episodes of mania where the mood is extremely high and uh, periods of depression where the mood is uh, particularly low and these patients have strong disabilities in their daily life and they have global um, uh, worse functioning in comparison to, like, let's say, the general population. There is um, differences between bipolar 1 and bipolar 2, for example, and their bipolar 1 are characterized by uh, acute manic episode and more frequent manic episodes, and bipolar 2 are characterized by uh, more depressed episodes and hypomanic uh, episodes. So it's already two different subgroups but um, it's not based on dimensional data. So it's not based on the, uh, for example, emotional dimension, like uh, which patients are more uh, emotionally hyperreactive or, I don't know, characterized by psychotic symptoms, for example. There is some hypothesis saying that um, maybe these patients have uh, some brain abnormalities and uh, these uh, abnormalities may explain some emotional dysregulation they can have because they are sometimes very up and very down and uh, it seems that they can't control their emotions and we can see that uh, by looking on, at the brain and it, especially in the frontal limbic regions which are responsible for the generation and the control of emotions. Actually, there is also like big uh, discrepancies in the literature because some people found uh, some abnormalities and other people found other abnormalities. And um, it seems that the small sample size of the studies and the heterogeneity of the disease, the differences between the different kind of patients, they may affect uh, the reliability of the results. So that's why we need a really big uh, sample size and uh, Enigma is a good way to achieve this goal to have a bigger sample size to um, fight this heterogeneity of the disease and better understanding it. With the Enigma data, actually, we are trying now and uh, we'd like to see more uh, specific subgroup because it's a very heterogeneous disease. So now we are trying to identify and better characterize subgroups of patients and based both on the brain structure, structure but also on clinical factors and demographic factors. And uh, ideally, that would be great to have also cognitive uh, assessments to see uh, we, if we can better characterize different subgroup of patients in this huge population. So in the DTI, so diffusion imaging data, we have in a total of 26 cohorts participating to the study and we have almost 300 subjects and uh, half patients have control, so uh, 1,500 uh, patients and 1,500 controls. The diffusion MRI is a, a very specific technique that allows to uh, assess the structural connectivity of the white matter in the brain, so it measures how uh, the signal uh, goes through the axon in the brain, uh, like uh, in the um, in the tracks. If you have uh, an environment where the molecules can go through easily, you would say it's an anisotropical uh, environment. And if, like in the bowl of, uh, like uh, in a glass of water, the molecules can go everywhere uh, without any di direction. So uh, with diffusion MRI, we are measuring if uh, molecules can go through in one direction. And uh, this is an indirect measure of the coherence of the fiber inside the tract. And uh, with this specific MRI technique, we are measuring uh, the fractional anisotropy and 
uh, this is an indirect in, uh, index of uh, structural integrity of the white matter tracks. So it means that the signal can go through and the uh, white matter tracks are well oriented and the, the, the brain area can communicate better. Uh, the most important finding uh, was uh, that we found really widespread abnormality in bipolar brain in comparison to the control. So the um, uh, sample size of uh, Enigma uh, work, DTI working group allowed us to find uh, abnormality in the frontal and limbic region, but also in the corpus callosum and uh, in frontal occipital region. And that was not found previously by a smaller study with a smaller sample size. Actually, we already found a secondary project on the machine learning. So we are using this data to do machine learning analysis. So we are now trying to uh, use this um, structural um, white matter values uh, to predict who can be bipolar patient or not. And uh, with this sample size we can apply machine learning analysis. And this is the project we are working on right now. I think that uh, Enigma is a really great uh, project and uh, it's important for the community in general to share their, their data and I think uh, in the future uh, people should be able to share their data and uh, they um, should share also their raw data like the uh, image they acquired from their um, uh, MRI project.